it was way easier than I thought. Well, I made a pretty big error. Uh, I forgot the poles that go to this tarp. Check out that view, though. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another adventure. As you can see, we're in kind of a desert canyon area and this one's going to be fun. It's going to be a little difficult to uh, find a spot to set up my shelter. Brought the DIY shelter that I sewed up at home, so we're going to try to find a flat spot. I have no idea where because as you can see, this is all rocks and tree roots all around me. So should be interesting. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid any rattlesnakes, heavy snake area. Hopefully they don't decide to come get cozy in the middle of the night in a sleeping bag. I doubt it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try to get a fire going and have a little snack. Got Falcor with us, he's out tooling around. Already jumped in the creek a few times, so he's soaking wet and dirty and filthy. He's gonna wanna, of course, climb into the sleeping bag with me, so uh, the joy of camping with a wild puppy. So stick around, we're gonna have some fun. is kind of relative. It's very scenic and very cool, but it's the flattest spot I could find. Let me spin you around. So up here the canyon keeps going, surrounded by these massive cliffs. Got the creek right here. Nice ambient noise. I got a spot right here. I can do the fire safely. I'm right next to the water and I got all this dry sand around, so everything else is pretty green. So that'll solve the fire problem. Spin you around here. And right in there where Falcor's at. I'll just clear all that, set up my little shelter, and we'll be set. Have awesome views this way and this way. But it is the desert and it's October right now, so it's gonna drop pretty quick at night. As soon as the sun goes down, it's gonna get chilly, so I wanna have as much blockage as I can with these rocks and trees around me. So I'll get to clearing the spot and get the shelter up and talk back with you guys in a minute. So every time I grab my leather gloves, this is what happens. Apparently he thinks that I'm wearing leather so I'm protected so he can just go nuts and start attacking me like this. Every time I put them on. Look at this. And it's just this all the time as I'm walking, chomping. <laughs> the poles that go to this tarp so can't really set it up exactly right now uh, I designed it to have two trekking poles that you could place and that'll hold the front end up and uh, yeah I forgot them so <laughs> uh, so come up with a solution and we're just gonna find two straight sticks cut them off on these trees and see if it works so yeah the joy of forgetting vital parts of your camping equipment and thank goodness I threw this little guy in the bag. I haven't even tried this, it's brand new. It's called a Nordic pocket saw. I normally bring a saw with me, but I thought I'm not gonna need to saw very much. I can use that shovel to kind of hack apart some sage and make do, but now that I need some branches, uh, this will come in handy. So this is just a little emergency pull saw. And you can see it's still in the plastic. You guys are gonna see first use of this. Nordic pocket saw sent this over, gosh, last year, and I just haven't had a chance to try it. So. I really hope it works. The idea is it has these large handles. Grab a hold of those guys, loop it around. Make sure you're facing, obviously, the saw blade in. And I imagine it's just a series of clean, long pulls. Oh, wow. It was way easier than I thought. 
<laughs> uh, that was pretty impressive. Gosh dang, that thing is sharp. So I will definitely leave a link for this guy in the uh, notes and I'm looking forward to using this during winter time. Maybe I'll take it out to do a survival episode just using this uh, in the woods because <laughs> that cut incredibly fast. So I'm happy. Let's do some more cuts. That is so easy. There we go, that should work. Well done, Nordic pocket saw. All right, I just measured these out, so put a little notch, about roughly the height I need. This ground is way too sandy to get a stake in over here. I barely got one in over there, so I'm gonna have to improvise and tie it around this rock over here. Anyways, keep improvising, figure it out. This is clearly isn't working because the stakes just keep popping up in the soft sand. Makes for a nice spot to sleep, but not so good with the stake, so let's see if I can get this tied off. Not pretty, but it's gonna have to work in a pinch. <laughs> Every time I'm at home prepping for the trips and I have my bag laid out, he immediately does that. He just crawls, gets right in my face, steps on everything. He knows it drives me crazy and it just makes him so happy. So I guess it's okay. All right, I got the shelter set up. Let's do a little walkthrough and I will show you what we got. It's pretty ugly, but hey, it'll work. All right, we got the Falcor cam. He's keeping watch. He's just waiting to get me wet and dirty. Look at him, sinister. Doesn't want to make eye contact. All right, we've got this point up here. There it is, tied out to this rock down here. And it's holding so far. It's got a lot of pressure on it. Like I said, there was just all this sand. So it wasn't gonna happen, even though stakes are barely set in. You can see I was running out of vertical height here. Uh, normally these anchor out more at an angle, but I didn't have the height. So I'm working with what I got. When you're out in the wild, you pretty much find the spot and make it work. Coming around, got the other stake tied off there. Check out that view though. Man. We got a creepy cave right up there. Probably some kind of gremlin up there. Right on the back, I normally would stretch this out more and do more tie outs, but I'm not gonna keep fighting the sand. So I just have the single stretch back here to kind of give me a little bit more headroom. It works, gives me enough room to lay out the bed. So I think next might do a little bit of exploring. I'm just gonna go scout around, find some wood, make fire, uh, get dinner ready. And I probably got a couple hours of daylight left. So temperature's already dropping. I don't know if you can see the, there's something kind of blowing in over here. The wind's picking up and it's getting overcast. So. I don't know. Oh yeah, while you're at it, now's a good time to hit like and subscribe. Helps out the channel. I shouldn't point at you when I do that. I won't do that. I'll go like this.
And there's the zoomies every time. All right, I got my firewood. This is just all sage that was laying around in the area. That's the nice thing, at least in the desert, is sage is everywhere and uh, it burns really hot, really clean. Uh, it's really not that smoky. And there's plenty of cow patties around, so if the mosquitoes come out, little trick, just throw a cow patty in the fire and it does keep away the mosquitoes. So I'm not noticing any right now though, just little gnats and whatnot. But get some uh, rocks, make a little fire ring, and we'll get fire going. I got the fire going. I think all the work is done. So now I can actually sit back, relax, and uh, just enjoy the evening. I think it's gonna be a killer night sky. Falcor had his zoomies, now he's relaxing. I think he just wants dinner. I brought him a treat as well, so that should chill him out. Uh, I'll throw out my sleeping bag. That's all I really got is sleeping bag and a uh, little fleece or coat for a pillow. So that should be comfortable. Um, but yeah, everything came together despite all the uh, difficulties with shelter and trying to put stuff up, but it's well worth it. It's super quiet, got the stream nearby, and it's incredibly nice and peaceful, so it should be a relaxing night. Actually went for a little luxury this time and brought a little chair. Of course, chasing flies. Oh, that's nice. It is so nice to bring a seat rather than just sitting on a rock or in the dirt. You want dinner right now? All right. Good boy, stay. Good boy. Just stay right there. All right, for dinner, I've got these tasty little treats. Not one, but two. I'm gonna clear the fire to the side and just throw these on the coals, let them sit for a minute, and have some delicious, can you guess it? Beef chimneys.
Those are done. And I brought a little treat for Falcor that he doesn't know about. You want a treat? Come. Come here. Sit. You be good. So being back in this rocky area with these big vertical walls uh, reminds me of one of the rescues I had to do when I was with the National Park Service. I was working over in Colorado and we had a call in an area that's called Black Canyon of Afghanistan, just huge vertical walls. They went up to roughly, I think, 2,000 feet. And uh, you have different scrambles to get down into the canyon, anywhere from class three to class five, where you're just basically crawling up, not necessarily roped in or needing ropes, but just pretty technical. So we got a call and the problem with that canyon is we had to have a variety of rangers positioned throughout the canyon uh, to complete those radio calls. You had to complete the triangle of communication, so we had to have one person on one side of the canyon, one on the other, and then our crew went down into the canyon to make the rescue. And uh, we got all geared up. I brought the medical kit, so we're going down this class four, class five scramble. I got a huge EMS kit. I was waiting to get the call to find out what was needed. They said, yeah, let's go ahead and bring oxygen. We don't know what we're getting into. We just knew it was an elderly gentleman. Uh, who thought he had broken his leg and couldn't climb out. He was with a Boy Scout group. So we make the descent, get down there, and we find him, check him out. Uh, he didn't have any broken bones. He was just pretty banged up and uh, pretty sore and got in a little over his head. So the scouts went ahead of us. They went ahead and climbed out, and he asked, well, can't you bring a helicopter down here? And we said, no, it was physically impossible. The water was too low, I think, at that time, so we couldn't even get a boat up the canyon. Uh, so we told him, we're just going to have to walk out, and it was just a series of coaching, slowly going, grabbing his gear on top of our packs and med kits, and uh, climbing all the way out of that thing. But the biggest thing that stood out is just when people head out in the unknown areas, they get all excited, they want to go, they want to adventure. I'm always telling people to go have an adventure, but you got to know what you're getting into, and you got to be prepared for worst case scenario. I mean, even if he had broken his leg completely, we would have had to get a stretcher and carry him out. That's the only option, and that does happen. So this just kind of flashed me back to that. It was a fun rescue and a fun uh, operation to just be a part of and all the coordination to make it happen. But good grief, it was a lot of work pulling that guy out. So know what you're getting into, study the terrain, know your skill set, and know what you can handle because sometimes rescue isn't coming <laughs> at least not a helicopter and if it's somebody crawling down into a canyon we may be waiting a while so bring good gear bring emergency supplies and bring a first aid kit <laughs> all right guys we're gonna rack out falcor is all uh snuggled up here i think he gets scared of the dark he keeps wedging himself in here close which is fine. So got the sleeping bag laid out. Uh, hopefully all the spiders decided to go somewhere else. So we'll see you guys in the morning unless something crazy happens. Good night. So I would say good morning, but we're not quite there yet. It's uh, almost 4.30, been up for quite a while. It got stinking cold. There was enough ash left in the fire that I just shoved some of the sage down in it and it took off. I was already awake anyways and freezing, so I thought why not just be awake and actually be warm. So just warm it up. falcor has been super restless all night. Uh, Probably every 15 minutes he'd get up and start growling and barking and see something. Uh, we had something moving back here in the trees, making some high-pitched noises. I thought it was a coyote, and then it was a little bit more of a scream noise. Uh, so a little unnerving, but it didn't bother us. Uh, but it just set him on edge to where he wouldn't relax after that. And that was probably at like 
11.30, so pretty much every 20 minutes, somewhere around there, he'd just get up, growl, bark, wake me up, and then of course I'd be shining my light looking. Uh, but somewhere in there from about two to four, I think I got a little bit of sleep. But it's much nicer now. I'm fairly awake and this fire is super nice. Uh, so I'm just gonna hang out here for a little bit. Maybe I'll crawl back in the bag here in a while, but. All right, morning guys. Uh, it is, oh, I think it's just a little after seven. Uh, laid back down, dozed off and on for about an hour or so. Just starting to get light. Uh, still pretty cold. I'm just gonna restoke the fire and uh, get some coffee ready and get up and moving. So, yeah, pretty pretty rough night. <laughs> pretty pretty horrible actually. Uh, but <laughs> it's what it is. This sleeping bag is terrible. Uh, so I'll probably do a review on that pretty soon because uh, yeah. It's absolutely horrible. So yeah, pretty rough night. Not much sleep at all, so I'm feeling it for sure. Uh, looking forward to getting a cup of coffee though. That's usually the best part of the whole trip. So either way, it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful morning. Have a nice sunrise bouncing off these cliff faces. So we'll check in with you guys shortly. <laughs> Coffee is just amazing in the wild. All right, guys, me and Falco are gonna pack up. Got coffee, good to go. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. Appreciate you guys hanging out, visiting with us, and leave a comment, what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy, whatever. Hit the like and subscribe, it sure helps out the channel. So, appreciate all the support, guys, and until next time, get out and have an adventure.